So welcome to Amazing Fruit and Drink. We are delighted to have co-founders of The Long Shot, Hugh Hodgson and George Blurton. Welcome along, boys. Thanks, Colm. Great to be here. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having us. Oh, we're absolutely delighted to have you. I can't wait to hear about your story and your journey. So look, we'll just start with a, a wee bit of background on yourself. So Hugo, if you'd like to start and then George can come in after. Sounds great. Um, yeah, you know, I don't exactly have a, a drinks background, um, more of a kind of interesting business background. Um, so prior to Longshot, I was um, originally I was working as a chartered surveyor in London uh, for three and a half years. Um, and one of my big interests, you know, one of my things off that was that it's, a, it's an industry that has no tech in, in it at all. Yet I kind of, you know, was sitting there surely saying, you know, tech is going to you know, come in, get rid of all, of all of us as people. So it always made me looking outside, looking at other businesses, I think, which kind of really fueled me to set up my own. Um, it was after a short stint in working for a startup in the US um, where I saw, you know, how interesting and dynamic startups could be. Um, and uh, actually, ironically, on a, you know, after one too many shandies one night, I decided I picked up a hard seltzer, um, you know, hair of the dog and all that. And uh, who, you know, who would ever thought a drink would change my life so much? But uh, yeah, that's uh, that was what led me to start up Longshot. Absolutely brilliant. And George, yourself? So yeah, I, similar to Hugo in that um, this is all a kind of new new experiment for us. I've I've got slightly more experience. So I. I've worked in drinks for a number of years, firstly for a kind of ethical soft drink startup. Um, we sort of had a big foundation looking after charities around the world. And then I moved into uh, beer, craft beer in London, which was uh, brilliant. So I worked for a number of different breweries and kind of just understood that beer is one thing, but kind of people are always after the next thing. You know, you don't just go in and say, what beer, you know, do you have now? It's, oh, I want to try this. I want to try that mango milkshake, all the rest of it kind of thing. And so there's always kind of new things. And there was this nice... Um, nice kind of bubble of expectation in the beer industry of what's going to be next and people started talking about hard seltzers have you heard about this new thing over in america people are going crazy for it and um yeah and, and about this time last year we hadn't really and then hugo obviously was in the states at the time her learning firsthand um you know doing a lot of late night research uh, into this <laughs> new drink and then um, kind of just got talking to me about how we how we thought it was going to come into the uk market and it's, and he had this brand new concept of using all natural fruit juice and creating our own take on the product. And here we are, kind of chewed my ear off long enough, got me to jump ship and start the long shot journey with him. Yeah, so we've been going, I so I joined up in March. Uh, it's been a roller coaster six months or so, but yeah, I think we're going all right. Thanks. Absolutely brilliant. And are you two guys friends or was this like a business <laughs> partnership or? We were, yeah, we started off friends. Yeah, unfortunately we are friends there, uh, aren't we, George? <laughs> Ish. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> Excellent. So tell me then, what, what are long shot drinks? Explain, explain to our audience about them. Okay, well, I mean, I think in short, I think it would help to explain this idea of a hard seltzer. Um, you may have not seen, you may have seen it on your Tesco supermarket shelf, maybe you haven't, um, but they're essentially, um, they are canned uh, alcoholic fruit sparkling waters. So, um, you know, you may have had still waters with uh, fruit juice involved, uh, you know, fruit juices within or um, extracts within it. And this is the kind of next stage of that. These are in a can, uh, they're fizzy, and uh, they have very few ingredients. So typically just water, alcohol, and some sort of uh, fruit flavoring. Um, for long shot, we went slightly the premium route. So we use fruit juices uh, rather than fruit extracts. And the advantage of this is, is that um, fruit juices, they have a much better flavor profile. Um, they also are less like to have stuff entwined within it. So a lot of extracts, you know, it slightly depends on the quality of the extract you have. And um, so we've tried to get the kind of purest, cleanest drink and uh, ingredients and assemble it in a can. And do they have to be a can to make it a hard seltzer? No, I mean, I, you could have a hard seltzer not in a can. I think the trend from the US has always been in cans. So, you know, that's what's kind of led to it. I think, you know, from our perspective, the reason why we chose cans was because, you know, cans are much easier to recycle, um, much lighter to transport. You can pack them closer together on, um, in containers. So it's much better for the environment. Brilliant. And that's something I was going to chat to you about. So is that important, sustainability and, and you know, being eco, if you like? 
eco-friendly? Is that important to your business? Oh, George, should I handle this one? Sorry, yeah. I think definitely, you know, I think all businesses now need to be looking um, at sustainability going forwards. Uh, if you're not, um, you know, I think people are, people constantly are making new decisions based on, uh, you know, whether it's ethical, whether it's social. So we've basically tried to get um, ingredients that are as near uh, from the UK as possible. So admittedly, our grapefruit is not from the UK, but our uh, strawberry and rhubarb and our raspberry black blackcurrant only come from 20 miles away to our manufacturer. So really, it's making no carbon footprint at all uh, until it's you know fully assembled in a can. Whereas you know you might buy some ingredients that have travelled around the world uh, just to get it on your plate, which I think is such a shame. That's brilliant. So provenance is also important to you then. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, this is great. So it sounds as if you're, you're very in vogue with what's going on in society at the minute. Well, I, th I think there's a number of changes. Sorry, George, I feel like I'm talking so much. But... Sorry, I'll get to you in a minute, George. Yeah. I think there's a lot of changes going on in society, and I think we're going to see more with um, a coronavirus coming into it. Um, I think it will change people's behaviours. I think you know, it might actually push us back to being less home working and more working from the offices. But kind of bringing in, into kind of the drinks and the food and drink scene, you know, our uh, take on uh, hard seltzers is that looking at kind of the food sector, people are going for much cleaner diets. They're more low calorie, they've got less sugar in, less artificials. So with this drink, we wanted it to pick up on all of those food trends. Now, I can't say it's healthy because no alcoholic drink is healthy. Um, but, you know, it is under 70 calories. It does only have, uh, it is low sugar and has four grams of sugar in it. Um, it is vegan. It is gluten free. So we do pick up on a lot of those, uh, a lot of those trends. But of course, alcohol um, should be uh, as part of a healthy, balanced lifestyle. Um, so let me just quickly chuck that in there. But it's, but it's funny because in the US, when hard seltzers were created in the US, they're marketed as health drinks. Um, so it was kind of like healthy alcohol, whereas we have much stricter regulation. Um, so I would say they aren't healthy and no alcoholic drink can ever be healthy, but there are certainly cleaner choices you can make. And uh, long shot is one of those. Brilliant. So George, do, do you think then there's going to be a demand for these, if you like reduced sugar drinks, like cocktails typically wouldn't be reduced sugar, would they? No, um, we're hoping so, Colm. Uh, but <laughs> we just to follow on from what Hugo was saying there, with people looking into what they're eat, putting in their bodies more and more, you sort of um, see people in the supermarkets before, let's pretend the C word hasn't happened. But in supermarkets, you'd see a lot more people turning the product around, having a read of what's actually in it, what they're putting into their bodies. So I think just generally um, younger generations want to resonate more with brands that, that are clean and more transparent and they can understand. And the whole um, low carb drinking stigma um which is kind of for a while persisted in alcohol you know some people assume that means less flavor or if it's low sugar you know you know less less of an experience but it's we're trying to prove that that's absolutely possible and in the states you know and um, these seltzers the reason one of the reasons they sort of exploded so much is with the sort of younger demographic sort of frat party kind of situations or all the all the guys getting together and instead of chugging beers they're talking about what flavor seltzers they've got you know it's it's that kind of so it can be a product for everyone in, in that in that um, in that space as well so yeah low sugar absolutely as long as it's done in the right way yeah very metrosexual i think yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely brilliant so tell me how long are you going now and what challenges have you both faced along this journey how long have you got? <laughs> Go ahead. I, I'm sitting and ready. I'm just going to have a cocktail soon. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess the main thing is um, people understanding what the hell hard seltzer means, right? So it's, um, you know, pretty much everyone who hasn't heard of it, you're starting from a base of zero because neither of those words make sense in the UK market. Hard meaning alcoholic and seltzer meaning sparkling water. So we're kind of just what we've done is try to incorporate that into our branding and say we are a hard seltzer but then also break it down and just once you explain what the hell that means people understand it so that's the biggest challenge right just trying to get people on board with what these drinks are and then once they know that explaining why it's good why it can fit into their their day-to-day -day life so that's that's probably been the biggest challenge but you know it's 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 definitely one we can work, find a way around brilliant absolutely brilliant and tell me, had, have you had any help along the way from like government agencies or, you know, councils or anyone along to sort of 
they give you a bit of guidance or grants or anything like that? Uh, Colin, if you know of any, please send them our way. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of those things available, um, but they're also find, you know, tied up in tiny, small legal details. Um, you know, uh, it, it seems, it always seems quite straightforward, but actually it takes a long time to do application forms. Um, at the moment, we've had one investor um, and I put some funds into the business myself. Um, we are in the process of raising more funds, um, but we haven't, we haven't kind of gone down that original route um, of using government grants background. I, I don't think they're available to us or not okay. all know anyway. I, I, I'll look out for you and see if there's anything about. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me in terms of the actual product, um, I mean, I'm looking at, at the cans here in front of me and I've got strawberry and rhubarb and raspberry and black currant and grapefruit. Where did the ideas for the flavorings come up? How did you go about that? Well, it's interesting you should ask. I mean, I think, you know, I think it kind of comes back to the U.S. flavors. You know, in the, in the U.S. they had flavors like, you know, lime and they had flavors. Uh, they did have a grapefruit one. Uh, they also had black cherry. And, you know, when I was trying them, that here were these drinks in the U.S. that were supposedly healthy, supposedly, um, you know, very good for you. But actually, none of them taste like the flavors that you actually, you know, get. So, you know, black cherry just tastes like one of those childhood sweets you get. Um, and, you know, lime just tastes quite artificial. So we wanted something that was as clean as possible. And so it has as few ingredients as possible. Um, and also, you know, you know, coming back onto that sustainability trend that you can, get, you can source it locally. Now that's not to say, you know, we're always gonna have English fruits and English flavorings, but, you know, predominantly we've got such great fruit in this country um, and in Ireland and, you know, really we should use the stuff that we find around here. Yeah. So that was why we kind of settled on kind of quintessential um, fruits from around the UK. Yeah, that, make, that makes sense because you're right. Some of the flavorings that you would get, even other American products and chocolate and stuff, is completely different to what, what we have in Ireland or you have it in Britain as well. It's, it's partly to do with regulation. I mean, the chocolate's an interesting one and even, you know, um, canned fizzy drinks. You know, what a lot of what people don't know is they have this um, high fructose corn syrup, which I believe is not allowed in the UK um, and in Europe by European legislation. So um, a lot of recipes have to be altered for the United Kingdom and Europe. Um, so that's, that's, yeah, that's one of the big factors in it. Brilliant. And okay, and, and obviously, you know, we're in the middle of, a, I feel like, a global pandemic. And I don't want to uh, talk too much about that. But George, how have you found out? How has it impacted upon your business? I mean, first things first, we had all these big plans to go out this summer and get on the street and, you know, be at all these events and trade shows and festivals and all the rest, which obviously couldn't happen. Um, yeah, no matter what you do um, online, it's never quite the same. So that's been the biggest thing. Uh, we had all these fantastic um, exposure plans, but that'll just be pushed next year. That, that's not going to slow us down. Uh, but, but really the day to day, we, um, we spend our day talking to people, you know, out and about in shops and bars and all the rest. And it's always, it's just slightly harder when you can only get one person in the shop at a time, you're wearing a face mask. It's hard to sort of get those relationships if we're being brutally honest about, you know, trying to sell the product to market. Um, so that, that's been um, just just learning to adapt with that. And um, it's just just the way it is for now. And that's fine. Uh, it's not to say it, it can't be done. Um, so, yeah, that's just kind of where, where we're trying to learn how we can sort of go about this. Yeah, ho hopefully this platform will actually help get your name out there as well. So well, what marketing strategies are you currently employing then? We try to um, try to keep it as you know use as many free strategies as we can you know social media is a big thing in terms of discovering new products you know the amount of scrolling going on in the last six months with everyone just at home working you know <laughs> you know suddenly people checking the social media is surprisingly a lot higher so there was a big opportunity to tap into that with you know your free content across your socials and then also we've done a bit of experimenting with paid um socials and then also paper and um, paper click on on google and the rest as well so that's kind of our digital marketing covered and then we've also sort of there was um there was a big kind of seltzer moment this summer uh, in the press you know lots of exciting new uk brands coming up which is brilliant because we uh, we don't want to just suddenly have the market flooded by big american brands uh, i think the uk consumer wants to learn a bit more about smaller craftier versions over here which is why as hugo was saying we've tried to incorporate 
classic Brit uh, British flavour combinations. We tried to tell our story about provenance and all the rest. So yeah, but that's kind of been our marketing, just getting those key messages out there in print, press, all the rest. And then, uh, yeah, going from there. Brilliant. Have you um, been adopted by big stores or, or is that not your idea? What, what's your route to market? That is the end game, absolutely. Um, and at each week, those the sort of hard seltzer selection in these bigger supermarkets is growing. And that's growing from a base of nothing at the beginning of the year. And now you go into the bigger, bigger supermarkets and there's two, three shelves of different options, which is brilliant. It means people are out there, people are trying new things. And it kind of proves that the market could take off in the same way the US has done. So yes, absolutely, we want to go into a supermarket when when the time is right though. Um, we want to build up to that and make sure we're partnering with the right brands along the way, you know, some smaller, medium-sized retailers first. And for now, we're just sort of sp um, focusing on speciality outlets, independents in the off in the off trade, as well as online, of course, because everyone's still drinking, right? But yeah. it's just better to send it online rather than maybe go, go and store and pick it up. So yeah, focusing on those and then building up the supermarkets is the plan here. Brilliant. And actually, I have tried uh, some of these in a can. Now, I'm not obviously as low calorie as yours, but, uh, and being a, a big boots bloke who usually drinks beer, I actually quite enjoyed it, if I'll be honest with you. Right. There you go. Well, yeah, that's great. That's great to hear you honestly saying that. So I think that's, I think that's it. I think, you know, a lot of people originally would have said, oh, I'd never drink these type of things. Try them. I actually realise that they are um, very refreshing. They're very light um, and natural tasting. Yeah, I'm salivating because I can't wait to get trying this very shortly. So I'd just like to ask both you, what, what's the favourite part of your roles uh, within Long Shot at the minute? Well, I, th I mean, I I'll jump in there. I think George is uh, stumped, doesn't know what to say. He can't think of <laughs> so, many, so many things that he'll be here for a long time. I mean, I think what's fantastic is, um, you know, working in a startup, it's the very dynamic. Um, you know, and that comes in two parts. We work very long hours, but we get, we, you know, have a, wear many hats. Um, but I also think the number of people you meet. I mean, you know, here I am, Colin, chatting with you. Um, you know, I've met some of your, co I've met some of your colleagues. Um, they've introduced me to their own connections. Um, and, you know, it's that with everyone on a daily basis. I think that's fascinating. Um, you know, hearing, hearing people's stories, how they're doing, um, having chats with them, particularly now where I've got these kind of awkward uh, Zoom and face uh, Zoom meetings, which are just, I think, they're the worst things in the world. But obviously, we have to do it for the, next, for the time <laughs> being. So, yeah, I think just the people and the wearing so many different hats. But what about you, George? I'd probably just say being able to you put your face next to the brand and say, yeah, we've made this, you know, and um, me and Hugo aren't the most creative people in terms of design and all the rest. And so I think we're pretty happy with what we've done here. And, you know, we took a long shot by trying out this new drinks concept and really happy with where we're at now. I think, yeah, just being able to say, see that we made that, you know. Brilliant. And just just tell the, the audience the backstory, because I, I really like the idea behind long shot. Just explain how that came about. Sorry, did you want me to do that? George, George uh, okay. Um, well, long shot came about because um, we've both, you know, been uh, in existing jobs and we, uh, you know, both wanted that new opportunity. Um, we're not, you know, I didn't have a drinks background, George did. Um, I was much more of a business background and we just simply took that long shot. Um, so we thought that actually there's nothing better than to give it a name, uh, a long shot, because you know, this is a long shot. It's not something we've done. And we hope that actually it encourages and inspires people to set up their own businesses. You know, it's not so difficult to do. Um, sure, there'll be long hours, hard work, but um, it's really, really rewarding. It's actually really interesting because I, I thought it was for a different reason. Obviously, you have shots. And if you have a look at this, this is a sort of bigger ten, and that is a long shot. So, you know, people can see that in two ways. You're not the first person who said that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is a long can with a shot of alcohol. Um, yeah, that, that, that has been mentioned. But yeah, the real reason is behind us, you know, giving, giving, it all, giving it all and quitting our jobs. Brilliant. Well, your honesty is absolutely brilliant. So before I go on and ask about the future, I want uh, you to tell the audience, where can we, we reach you? Best place at the minute is online. Uh, so as I said, we're on, you know, Facebook and Instagram. And, you know, we love hearing from our customers on there, sending your pictures and all that kind of thing. You can buy the drink online on Amazon and all these kind of kind of things if you're after next day delivery and all that. Uh, if you really can't wait for 
three days for your drinks to arrive. It's probably the best, best way to go about it. Yeah, so on, online for now. And then you'll be the first to hear when we're out there in the stores. Don't worry, we're not going to keep that quiet. Brilliant. And the, the web address is www.longshotdrinks.co.uk. Or dot .com. Yeah. Or dot .com. You've yeah, got yeah. And I should just add the Amazon. We are available on Amazon Prime. So if you're thinking about having a little Netflix session and fancy getting a bit, bit crazy in front of that TV, then uh, order yourself a case. It'll be with you in 24 hours and can definitely spice up your night. Absolutely brilliant. So tell me, before we do our, our little tasting session, what's the future? What, what do you hope to achieve with long shot drinks? We, uh, yeah, again, the same. <laughs> <laughs> there's awkward, there's awkward meetings. <laughs> awkward <laughs> silence. <laughs> so we, we see, um, as I said, we want to sort of champion the whole British craft hard seltzer movement and we want to be the, the brand leading that here in the UK. We want to champion our ingredients. We want to be the first name on the, the hard seltzer conversation and we want to ultimately be on the shelves of the supermarkets. We're going to try, you know, might experiment with it on draft, you know, at the pub. If, if the market evolves to that stage, that would be great. Excellent. And we also want to keep using that whole craft beer model of always releasing special editions, small releases. So we've got our core range now for three flavors, but you know, we want to constantly be adding new flavors to that range and bringing other ideas in. So it's not just resting on what we got now. We want to keep exploring, keep innovating with different combos. Yeah. And may the, may the products evolve completely? Like there's something different with alcohol? There are different, um, for now we use just a very neutral grain spirit. So you, the idea being you don't taste that, you sh that we just want you to taste the fruit juice kind of thing, which is brings its own, you know, it's almost, you don't taste the alcohol at all it's at the level it at, it's at now, but that's not, just, we might not experiment with, you know, a double version, you know, and up the ABV, up, yeah, and all the rest of it. So there's lots of different variations we can work in, but we're just pretty happy with the, the core range we got now. Brilliant. Well, on that note then, I think it's time for the, the tasting. I can't wait. So I must say, lads, uh, if I can just show this up, this packaging is really good. I like it, the texture of it. It actually feels uh, rich, for want of a better expression. I, I really like it. So the fact that you're not um, artistic hasn't held you back, I have to say. It's really good. It should also be added that that flavour you've got in your hand, um, the raspberry black currant flavour has been awarded a great taste award uh, by the Guild of Fine Food. Oh, um, so we are awarded that in September, late September, um, wow. which you know, for a startup challenger brand is, you know, it's ab absolutely amazing. You should have been telling me that earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> You're being very typically British. You're hiding your light under a bushel. <laughs> well, I have to say, lads, slancha. So that's <laughs> cheers and Irish. I'm going to taste this for you. All right. Likewise. We, cheers. Instead of talking you through the flavours, Paul, can you just sort of tell us what you are tasting then? Talk okay. So this one is raspberry and black currant. I'm going to do it. This is going to be like whiny here. Yeah. So I, I can actually really get the black currant taste is actually a bit stronger for me than the raspberry. And you're right. There's no, there's no real taste of the alcohol. If I didn't know there's alcohol in that, I probably wouldn't know if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a little kick. I mean, I think it's, uh, I think it's interesting what you picked up there is, you know, black currant, a lot of people assume it's quite sweet. Um, and so you get that power and flavor. It's actually got a slightly tannic flavor to it, a bit like a rich red, red wine. Yeah. Um, so that's why we kind of added in the raspberry to kind of bring a bit of the sweetness in. That's not to say, you know, I think it's not like your kind of typical kind of canned cocktail that's super sweet. No, it's not. It's actually, it's nothing like that at all. In fact, it's, um, I think you mentioned it earlier. It's actually quite refreshing. Now, if I was really chilled in loads of ice and uh, I, I could be, uh, I got a lot more of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that's the last name, Black Current. I'll move on now to the, the strawberry and rhubarb. So we'll, we'll show that. Fantastic. Again, I, I, I'm a fan of the packaging. I really like it. Oh, nice smell, too. You drink the whole thing in the first one. <laughs> no, I did not. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> Let me take a wee sip. So that smell, the smell's lovely. T you're a very responsible uh, worker, you know, work hours, only having a tiny bit, you know. <laughs> If that was George, he'd be all over it. <laughs> he'd poured it down like this. <laughs> Again, I can taste the strawberry there more than the rhubarb. That, that's actually, that's my favourite out of the two so far. That's really nice. Really refreshing. I'm going to have an RV taste that actually. Do you, um, rhubarb was an interesting one because 
not you know not that many people can associate the flavor with with what it is you know very rarely do well i don't i don't really eat much rhubarb you know maybe rhubarb crumble at a posh summer barbecue but not yeah. it's not a flavor that I, I think the market is that familiar with which is why we've seen really good reception with that because people it's it's quite unlike there's not much out there cutting into that area of the market so that was a flavor we were quite excited to play with yeah it's brilliant actually there's a local uh, gin jaw box gin and they do uh a rhubarb and ginger, I think it's really nice, and it's not all like that. I like it. I, I, I might come back to that later, okay? So, lastly, then we have um the grapefruit. So, this will be interesting. I wouldn't be a massive grapefruit fruit fan, so let, let's see how this goes down. I mean, I think, um, you know, we should say that chilled. You're, you're drinking them warm and we'd never recommend drinking them when warm, you know, just it's not the same. It's not as refreshing. So no, it's good to hear that you, it's good to hear that you still think they're refreshing when you're drinking them warm. No, and they are. And actually, the smell of that is beautiful. That's actually quite nice. Now, that's surprised me how nice that is. So what we've had a lot of reception is that the grapefruit isn't as, you know, normally when you think of a grapefruit, it's very sour. Yeah, it's like that. It's, mm -hmm. yeah and, it's, and it becomes a bit like Marmite. Um, so we've used, because, it's, because the grapefruit juice we've used, we haven't used so much of it. It's much softer. So we, t we tend to find that a lot of people who don't normally like grapefruit actually end up quite liking that because it's not as strong. Really nice. Actually, really nice. Really refreshing. Now... I've just been thinking as I was drinking that, and they would be lovely as a mixer for other alcoholic beverages. Yeah, you're not, that, yeah, you're not wrong. I think we found a new salesman, Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> but I must say, has someone else said that? Have you thought about that yourselves? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we see it being served in a variety of styles. I mean, I think the obvious one is, straight from the can you're on the go or maybe you just can't be bothered you just pull it out your fridge sit in front of the tv or whatever you want to do um but you could posh it up and put it in a glass of over ice or you could mix it as part of a cocktail i think i think there's a variety of serving styles um we don't want to enforce or endorse one or the other because you know if you've got friends around you're trying to impress them then you could certainly whip these out and say look i've made you cocktails <laughs> um <laughs> But on the other hand, you know, if you just wanted to drink it straight from the can, that's also great too. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, if you're going out to be picnic, then it'd be nice for a picnic. Uh, and I, I could definitely see them being uh, mixed with other alcohol and even, as you say, a, a different style of cocktail. But I, I must say, I'll pour another wee drop of strawberry just. <laughs> Let's be honest, a picnic's no fun without alcohol. You know? <laughs> of course not. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you go for. Yeah. The food's incidental. <laughs> Well, lads, I, I must honestly say that uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. They were they were really nice. Um, probably the strawberries just the winner for me, and that's just personal. And uh, closely followed by the grapefruit and the the black currant and raspberry. Re really good. Uh, different, definitely different from what you'd get in the supermarket. And I'm going to say in a good way because the other ones are if you like sickly sweet. They're nearly what kids would drink in a, in a you know diluted orange or diluted black currant. That's not that. That's a grown-up drink for me. And that was one of the key the key messages we wanted to get across, right? And people, when they hear canned cocktails and all this, all these categories, they immediately think of those sickly sweet, um, you know, electric blue, you know, alco pops that we used to all drink when we were yeah. back when clubbing was a thing. Um, and yeah. in those days, so we wanted to take it to the next stage and be the sort of sophisticated elder brother of those those early sugary cocktails. So you shouldn't be getting that sickly treacly feeling your throat it should just be as it says fruit infused just a light flavoring and it's it's actually uh, it's very refreshing I, I i like that now not looking out in this damp dank uh october day but maybe in the summer lovely sun and you know I could, I could see myself drinking these in spain maybe as well really what? really nice lads i have to say I, I i'm very pleased at the tasting I'm, I'm glad to hear that i mean we don't want it just to be a summertime drink i mean it should, you know, I think it does work very well on a summer's day, but also, you know, those times where maybe you, uh, maybe you want to have a drink at a, a pub or drink at a, you know, drink at home and you don't, and you don't want to have the kind of side effect of alcohol being so strong, so overpowering that dry mouth, you know, maybe it's that fuzzy head that it slightly gives you. Then we also see that kind of fits in with that. Maybe you're, maybe you're training for something, um, 
and you don't want the kind of calories or the heavy weight of a, of a kind of traditional alcoholic drink, then, you know, this also fits in with that. So yes, it is, you know, very suitable for a summer picnic or a summer's day, but we also see it kind of fitting in as part of an all year round kind of uh, diet. Yeah, maybe to cheer me up later on this evening, is that what you're saying? Well, exactly. Once you've done your drive home, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I must say, lads, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoyed the taste of your drink. I really like the packaging. And w- when people see this and feel the texture, it, it's it's brilliant. And I thoroughly enjoyed talking to you as well. It's been absolutely fantastic. I think our audience and our viewers will enjoy it too. And hopefully there's some very large supermarkets uh, on this summit that might well be interested in having a chat. And where we can help, we absolutely will. Yeah. Happy days. Thank you, Colin. But if there's any, anything else you'd like to say, just a, a parting shot, parting long shot before we leave. <laughs> Pardon that very terrible pun. <laughs> you've, you've literally stumped us. Um, <laughs> First time for a million boys. <laughs> probably probably should it. When you said not cheesy, that was um, that completely threw away <laughs> everything. <laughs> we had, we had oh, brilliant. Well, look, all I can say is I really wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you for sending me my my little case of long shots might well enjoy that. Uh, my sons here, 14 or 12, I said, Daddy, can we have some of that? I said, no, not just yet, boys. Me and Mummy are going to try that later. A couple of years time, eh? Your time. Yeah. Well, boys, <laughs> look, I'll stay in touch and thank you very much and I really appreciate your time coming on the show. Good man. Thanks Thank a lot. you. Cheers.